All right, so next up, what do we get for this box beam here? Uh, six feet long, got two forces applied to it, what, 10 kips at two feet, uh, four kips at four feet. And then we wanna analyze what's happening for the stress at these points A and B. So uh, they're both located at three and a half feet kind of along the beam. One of them's located uh, kind of in the top corner here, and one of them's located in the center on the side there. So if we want to analyze this, uh, again, there's a few things we need to do first. So uh, finding out the reactions is obviously going to be kind of the first thing we do, start with our static stuff. So. Got a free body diagram of the sucker here. We've got two unknowns. Should be easy to solve for, right? So taking a moment about C, uh, that's equal zero. So negative 10 kips times two feet minus another four kips times four feet plus six feet times dy is equal to zero. dy is equal to six kips. And once you know that, you can take the sum of the forces in the y direction to find what your cy is. So sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero, is equal to cy minus 10 minus four plus six, cy is equal to eight. Which gives us a shear diagram that looks like this. And from that, we can construct a moment diagram that looks like this. So maximum moments there is 16 kip feet, drops down to 12 kip feet at the four foot mark, and then drops down to zero at six. That having been said, we are worried about what happens at the x equals 3.75, sorry, 3.5. That should be 3.5, 3.5 uh, feet mark. So that's gonna be uh, three quarters of the of the distance from here to here, the drop there is for um, uh, the drop from the drop from here to here is four uh, kip feet. So three quarters of that way will drop three kip feet, which means that we are worried about the moment. Uh, the the point that we're worried about has a moment of thirteen kip feet. Okay, so we're also going to be worried about the i. Uh, so our iz, again, it's it's a box uh, beam, so it's fairly easy to calculate. Uh, it's just going to be the i for the kind of outer minus the i for the for the inner box. So one over twelve times six inches times six inches cubed minus. 1 over 12 times 4 inches times 4 inches cubed. And that's going to give you uh, 86.6666666666666 inches to the fourth. Next up, um, yeah. Um, so the points we're worried about. Uh, so Again, just a reminder, I'll draw this on the side here. Worried about A here, and worried about B here. So what do we know about A and B? Well, um, we know that A is at the top, so it's fairly easy to calculate what the shear stress is there because the Q is gonna be zero. So our shear stress is zero. Yay, simple. Our bending stress is not zero. Uh, so the bending stress, again, is going to be uh, given by this formula here. So that's, uh, that's uh, negative m times y divided by i, so negative 13 kip feet times 12 inches per foot. So I can cancel out the feet and use inches 
times 3 inches is the uh, y distance there divided by the 86.6 inches to the fourth. Cancel out units, that ends up being uh, kips per inch squared, uh, which gives us uh, five point, uh, negative 5.404 uh, KSI. So that's uh, that's the that's all the stress we have at that point. So it's just a pure uh, compressive stress. There's no shear stresses. So, well, <laughs> given that we know we know that we're kind of at at, at the situation where those are our prime stresses as well. Um, so we just need to figure out what our uh, maximum shear stress is. So again, just plotting more circle. Uh, the center of our Mohr circle is going to be the sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2. So negative 5.404 plus 0 divided by 2 gives us a negative 2.702 ksi. Which means that our radius, well, that's also, I mean, if we put, if we plug it into the actual calculation, that just gives us what? It gives us negative five point four zero four minus negative two point seven zero two squared plus zero squared, which gives it, which is equal to, which is equal to. 2.702 KSI. Pretty simple. Pretty simple to tell when uh, when the all we've got is the ones one stresses. So again, uh, that's our radius, which means that the stress state for maximum shear is at uh, a situation when we have the principal, the, the normal stresses is negative uh, 2.702 and our uh, shear stresses is uh, also 2.702. And that uh, that is always, that's going to be at 45 degrees uh, from, uh, on an element that's rotated at 45 degrees from the, from the prime axis. Or from, from the normal from the previously defined coordinate system. So that's, uh, that's just drawn right here. And yeah, uh, do, do, do. and uh, if you're thinking directionality, uh, again, it's a negative seven of the, 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 the compressive stresses are all, all compressive. And you just get, and as for, um, it, it's sometimes a bit more difficult to visualize, uh, but you got to keep in mind that this thing is, you know, we're squeezing this cube this way. So that would result in if we, if we're squeezing a cube that way, uh, if we started out with a cube like this, that's going to result in a cube it looks more like this, which was gonna need shear stresses that act like that in order to deform it that way. So that, that's uh, that's how you can tell your directionality there. As for B, we're we're, we're looking at B here too. So uh, B is located at the center. So our bending stress is equal to zero because our y is zero. The shear stress, however, is not. Uh, our shear stress uh, is just going to be V Q over I T. We know what our I is. We know what our V is 12 kips. Uh, T is going to be the total thickness of the section at that point. So again, that's this plus this. Those, those two one inch uh, thicknesses on either side. So that's two inches. 
or Q. That can be I use the I use the subtractive method. So basically, I was kind of uh, looking. I was looking at the Q for this entire thing here, and then I subtracted the Q for the space in the middle. So that's uh, six inches times three inches is the area, and then its Y bar uh, overall would be 1.5 inches. And then for the gap in the middle, uh, four inches by two inches is this area, and its centroid was at one inch. So that gives us a Q of 19 inches to the third. Which, when we start plugging stuff in, so our shear stress, our, our load is uh, 2,000 pounds, uh, 19 inches is our, is our Q divided by two inches times uh, 86.66666 inches to the fourth. So again, uh, with these inches to the third on the top, we can cancel those out and cancel out this uh, the the inch on the two on the thickness term, and we can cancel out two of the inches on the i term, which gives us a value of uh, which leaves us in psi pounds per square inch, and the value of that is going to be uh, 219.2 psi. So we kind of determine what an element like that looks like. Uh, we are again, we've only got the shear stresses. If we're worried about the directionality, um, again, at, the, at that point, it's a negative shear stress. So that means that essentially, uh, On this side, on the left-hand side of the cube, we're pushing down. On the rightmost side of the cube, again, it needs to be pushed up to resist that. And then, you know, like that on the top and the bottom. Which means that on the positive x face, there's a force in the positive y direction, which means that this is a positive shear stress. So that's... Uh, that's that there is our stress state. And then we can use that to find out what the, uh, what our principal stresses are. So again, more circle is pretty easy when the shear stress is the only stress. Where is our centroid? Well, sigma x plus sigma y divided by two. Zero plus zero divided by two is zero. So the center of our Mohr circle is at the origin. The radius of our Mohr circle is just the magnitude of the shear stress. Because again, when we look at this face right here, when we look at that face right there, we have a positive shear stress on that face. And we have no other stresses on that face, which places us right here on Mohr circle, down at the bottom there. So our our radius is just equal to the magnitude of that shear stress, which means that our principal stresses can be found here and here at plus or minus 219.2 uh, psi. So to go from so to go from there to there. If we, if we start out with a shear stress on this face and we rotate it counterclockwise 45 degrees, that means that this face corresponds to this face here and we moved from here to here on Moore's circle. So that face turned into the, the positive stress, which means that the other, so we got uh, the directionality that of 219.2 PSI going that way. So 219.2 PSI tensile here and tensile here, and then the same amount, but compressive on the other two faces. 
And that is about that.